All right, hey y'all, let's do February favorites today, my favorite video to film every single month. And before we get into it, I want to announce again, even though I announced it in my last video, I'm going to Tao, which is in the Santa Fe area in a couple of weeks, and I need to know if there's any good restaurants, any cool things to check out. If you happen to live in the area or have visited, let me know what I should go see. Anyway, so let's go ahead and get into it with my non-tangible favorites of the month. First one, I have to say is I, Tanya, and I cannot remember if I saw this movie in January or February. I know I didn't mention it in my January favorite, so I'm going to go ahead and mention it again. If you have not seen it yet, go check it out. It is so incredibly good. In fact, I would definitely not mind going and seeing it a second time, but if you give me like a poor trailer park trash girl as my heroine in a story and I am all over it. Also last weekend I saw Black Panther. So incredibly good. I will say that my expectations were incredibly high for this movie because everyone had been hyping it up so much like online and then everyone I saw in person who had seen it before me. I even ran into someone like coming out of the theater as I was going in and they everyone was just hyping it up so incredibly much and there were a couple of things like I would love to go see it again because there was a few instances where I just kind of didn't get the story progression and so I'd like to see it again because I think that would kind of work itself out, you know, pay closer attention. Anyway, but in general, amazing. I loved it. The costuming, the makeup, oh my god, the action scenes, everything was so good. And I have no, like, I didn't read the comic books. I didn't know. I don't read comic books in general. I'm not into superhero movies. I could really care less, uh, but this movie was really good. And I know it has been said multiple times, but Michael B. Jordan, Oh my god. Amazing actor. He was so good in that movie. Um, but my god, is he a beautiful man. Huge fail would be my allergies. So if I sound all stuffed up and snotty in this video, that's why. I swear, like, I was laying in bed one night. You know when you lay down and it, like, oh, everything just stuffs up? And it's like someone has let a cat in here. There has to be a cat in this house. So that's the only time I ever have bad allergies like that. But I don't know what it is. Spring air, whatever. So last week was my little brother's birthday. He turned 14. It's really affecting me. Next year he's going to be in high school. I don't know how I'm going to deal with it. But we did like a family party, went out to dinner for his actual birthday, and then last night we went to a Brahma's game, which is our local minor league hockey team. I love going. The games are so fun. They fight so much more than like the NHL players ever do. Also this month I went to a benefit put on by Impulse Group Dallas, which is like an HIV slash safe sex uh, outreach group in the area. And uh, oh, I actually got like the best lip balm ever. I love it. And it says Out of the Closet, which is a chain of thrift stores that benefit like it's like 99 cents out of every dollar goes to benefit HIV research. And I love the lip balm. <laughs> anyway, so I just had a blast. I posted a couple of photos on Instagram, just like naked men all over the walls, free drinks. I mean, what more could you ask for? Anyway, so let's go ahead and move on to books, what I have been reading for the last month. And I just recently started a new book by a fellow YouTuber, Caitlin Dowdy, AKA Ask a Mortician, and I highly, highly recommend it. It is called Smoke Gets in Your Eyes and Other Lessons from the Crematory. Now I have I've been watching her YouTube channel for quite some time now. I don't know, maybe about a year. And I love it. So informative. It's really helped me. Um, not that I've ever had like some huge fear of death or anything like that. Um, but it's definitely helped me become more death positive. And I, I developed a death plan. If anything, you know, uneventful should happen to me. You know, that way my mom has my social media passwords, things like that. Like what would I want in the event? You know, I probably won't die. <laughs> You know, I'm young and healthy, but you just, you never know. And that's what the bad death is, what she says is not being prepared. And um, it makes the, the mourning, the grieving process so much more difficult and much more expensive too. Anyway, I just made sure that my parents knew that I have a very small life insurance policy through work and that my little brother's the beneficiary, things like that, um, that so often you know, it's such an awkward conversation for people to have and a sad conversation. We don't want to think about that, you know, with our about our family members not being here anymore. But it's something 
something that needs to be spoken about. I highly recommend her channel, Ask a Mortician. Just so funny, but actually gets you to think about some serious topics too. And then um, the book that I'm reading, of course, again, Smoke Gets in Your Eyes. And I am, looks like 88% done. And I, I'm planning on uh, downloading her other book, which is From Here to Eternity, when I finish this one. And funny enough, right before I started Smoke Gets in Your Eyes, I decided to reread The Giver by Lois Lowry. It's something probably all of us had to read in like junior high. I remember reading it, I think it was like seventh grade, and I fell in love with it. And when the movie came out, I don't know, it was like five years ago, I actually really liked the movie too. And uh, I don't even know, honestly, what made me think of it. I don't know. Maybe some media reference or something like that, like popped it back into my brain. I went and looked on the Kindle store and it was super cheap. So I just downloaded it and reread it again. I absolutely have to say it stands the test of time 100%. And if you have not read it or if you haven't read it in a long time, I highly recommend picking it up. And right before that, I read Victoria by Daisy Goodwin. It's a historical fiction uh, based on the life of Queen Victoria, based on her early life, you know, from like right before she becomes queen. I believe she was like 18. She had a very, very long reign um, and she lived, you know, quite a long life. Anyway, so right before she becomes queen until the point that she gets married to Prince Albert. And they had one of the most beautiful love stories ever. You know, they didn't marry because it was like, two royals trying you know cousins trying to just get married their parents insisted or anything like that like they truly deeply loved each other and uh yeah they have like nine kids or something like that <laughs> all right let's move on to the few products that i wanted to mention that i have been loving in all honesty i've spoiled so many of these <laughs> because i spoke about them in like past videos or i've been raving about them etc uh this one included my first favorite abh dip brow pomade in the shade ash brown I picked this up in January when I repurchased my favorite brow pencil, and I'm telling you, I've barely been touching that pencil. I do have it in my brows today. This is my good brow, and I think it just looks beautiful. I just feel like I can get so much more precise with this. I can really get into the gaps that I need to fill in. Um, when I do fill them in, they look really natural. I can really like create the arch that I'm missing on this brow, like this brow's arch is higher. Anyway, I just feel like it's easier to create a brow like I it doesn't look maybe quite as natural um, but it does so much of the work that I want it to do unfortunately this brow my bad brow uh, I've been trying to get the hairs in the corner front corner up here to grow in for ages and the good thing is that they are growing in the bad thing is that they grow in this way it's like what the hell it's not fair even with the tiniest, most precise pencils, there is no way to get literal hair strokes, and you can with this, if you have a teeny little, you know, brush, angled brush. Next product I wanted to mention, again, just raved about it last week, Becca First Light Priming Filter. I love this stuff. Now, I haven't had it an incredibly long amount of time. I haven't been using it for like two months. It's been probably more like two weeks in all honesty so you know wanted to let you know that oh and this was sent to me by the way um but my god am I in love with this and I I mentioned this before when this launched I got a sample of it I tried it I did very very much like it but it didn't like wow me so much that I went out and bought the full size but my god am I loving it right now maybe because it's winter my skin's a little bit more dry than usual um because that's why I picked up the Becca velvet blurring primer um because it is like you know nice matte finish powdery finish helps control oil but I just find that I don't want that right now maybe in the summer maybe in the summer I'll really get back into that primer but right now I'm telling you I just adore this the finish it creates it really is like a filter um, I don't know just feel your skin feels great um, makeup goes over it wonderfully and it just kind of has this blurring effect without being greasy I don't think that I would be into the backlight priming filter I don't I think that's too much luminosity for someone who has oily skin I think this one is just a perfect perfect level. And what I've been using so much of for foundation is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus because it's the only one light enough for me right now. I've just gotten so light this winter. And I do very much like that foundation, don't get me wrong, but it has been looking a little bit dry, a little bit heavy on me. But now that I have that primer, that is such a good combination. All right, this next favorite is something I picked up right at the end of January. And 
I'm sorry, I gotta rave about it. Kylie Cosmetics Skin Concealer. I have the shade Stone. I've never been into Kylie Cosmetics and I don't think I'm, I'm gonna get into them. You know, the eyeshadows and the lip kits, I'm just really not interested, doesn't really do it for me. Just not what I'm attracted to. But I absolutely have to give credit where credit is due. This concealer is amazing. I love it. I do actually wonder if a lot of people are gonna like this though um, because it's very reminiscent of my favorite under eye concealer which is the Too Faced Born This Way which is like medium coverage. It's not tart, shape tape, heavy, full coverage, matte finish. It's not and that seems to be what people are really into. But I am not. I like something just like this, like right down the middle, good medium coverage. Not too much for every day but gets the job done um, but not like heavy, creasy, makes me look older, emphasizes lines. This has kind of a radiant, luminous, light reflecting quality to it. It's not greasy, it's not emollient, it won't slip around or anything like that, um, but it's not matte either. All right, just a couple of more products. I did want to mention one scrub from Saturday Skin, the Rub-A-Dub Peeling Scrub. This was sent to me as well. And I have loved all of the Saturday Skin products that I've tried. They're a new-ish brand to Sephora. I'm using their eye cream right now, which blows my mind that I still have not used that thing up. Anyways. I have been looking for ages for a replacement for my basic ass St. Ives scrub. I love it. Like that's all I want to buy and it's like four bucks, um, but they're not cruelty free. So I've tried a few things. There was a scrub from Ulla Henriksen that I very much enjoyed that was like a walnut scrub, but it wasn't, I liked it, but it wasn't like perfect. So I'm still looking, trying this and I do very much enjoy it. It has a chemical and like a mechanical um, exfoliating property to it. It has little scrubbies in it, but supposedly they're like not the ones that are bad for the environment. Your skin feels very, very polished afterwards. Um, so, so far I am really enjoying it. And final product, I can't remember if I mentioned this before or not when I picked up all the other Verb hair care last month, but I did pick up their brush. They actually have a few brushes. I think this one is called the Detangling Brush, but I could be wrong. I would actually still like to get their blow dry brush too. So I have a wet brush. It's actually a mini one and it's what I use for travel. And I'm like, I want to get a big version of this and I just happened to be at Sephora they had it I picked it up I love it I use it every day now it's actually a little bit dirty sorry I just love Verb in general like their products the fact that they're cruelty free that they're a Texas brand I just love them anyway thank y'all so much for watching today and you know the drill I need to know what's been going on in your life for the last month did y'all have a good Valentine's Day do you have any products that you've been loving or any horrific fails that you would like to share we would all love to know and I'll see y'all in a couple of days in my next video don't ever forget it is perfectly okay to just be small town famous I love y'all